This is SDR Sharp with an Air Spy. The Air Spy is using a very high uh, sampling rate to send over the USB. Uh, remember, it is a USB 2 uh, device. It gives 10 mega samples per second, that is 40 megabytes per second and that's close to the upper limit for USB 2. I have set a very aggressive AGC. Uh, that is to have AGC all the way down into the noise. And the purpose is to demonstrate uh, what happens when I change the gain. Maximum gain is like this. And you can see in the IF spectrum that the signal to noise ratio of the weak signal we have here is about what could it be 22 decibels or something like that it's in the bandwidth of the FFT spectrum here so for the full bandwidth the signal to noise ratio is more or less wa 1 I can switch in so you can listen to the signal while I'm changing the gain settings At this point we have lost signal to noise ratio that is perfectly audible and you can see it in the spectrum uh, the dynamic range measured from zero down to the noise floor is 83 decibels approximately if I instead use full LNA gain which is 14 and then reduce the IF gain instead this is about how far I can go without losing signal to noise ratio but notice now the dynamic range is nearly 30 decibels better there is a big advantage in reducing the IF gain instead of the LNA gain uh, if the problem is signals in the close range signals that would be visible in the spectrum that we see for signals outside the passband it is the other way around then it is more favorable to reduce the LNA gain to avoid the LNA to get saturated now if I increase the signal level by steps of 10 dB like this now it starts to look ugly so I switch off this this is a 8657A generator from Hewlett Packard switch on something else which is here a little bit lower in frequency uh, I need more signal this is a crystal oscillator and with this you can see the reciprocal mixing due to the local oscillator of the air spy I disconnect this and connect it again and you can see in the upper spectrum that the noise sidebands are only very close in frequency 
The noise floor doesn't change if you are several hundred kilohertz away from the signal. And this is good. I will now move the uh, USB connector from the USB 3 port, where it's sitting now, to a USB 2 port. So, switch off. And you can see there are occasional glitches, but there's not a big difference. And I reduce the signal level now. And here you can see there are many more glitches at the different signal level. For weak signals, no problem. It's easier to see this with the signal generator, so I go to the frequency. And I now step the level in steps of 5 dB. And here you can see, at this level there is a big problem. And below, it's okay again. This means that the load on the USB varies a little bit depending on what is in the bits. And I don't know why, but we are on the very limit of the USB connector on this computer. It's an X9 DAI motherboard. Here are two instances of Linrad running with two different AirSpy units. And I have a weak signal in a bandwidth of 2 kHz. And I will step that signal up now to demonstrate what happens. This is 5 dB steps. And it all looks good so far. But not here. The lower screen from Linrad is on a USB 2 port. The upper one is on a USB 3 port. So to get an idea about it, I go here and press T to get the timing. You see 10 megahertz. And here and press T. And it is a little bit less, 99.96. It's not 10 megahertz as it should be. I can increase the signal level a bit more, like that. And now it looks good again. So if I go here and I press T again and then again T, to get a new reading and you see it is now 10 megahertz and stepping the signal level down into the problematic region and wait for a while and you can see that the sampling rate drops 9.98 and we have terrible interference because the continuity of the sine, sine wave is destroyed. So, this particular computer with these particular drive routines 
uh, cannot manage 10 megahertz on the USB 2 port while the USB 3 is fine at all signal levels.